Hi, my name is Darren. I'm the author of Organelle.org, where I write about topics that are translations of things I learned during a nine-month contact event with a non-human intelligence. I'm not exactly sure what the nature of that intelligence was. Sometimes I think of it as an angel. During our contact, it taught me many astonishing things that fundamentally altered the nature of my own intelligence. I'd like to share one of those things with you briefly. It's a very, very powerful idea that I think has the capacity to radically alter human intelligence and could change our world. It has to do with how we count and with one of the most important appendages of our bodies, the hand. Now, one of the things that's interesting about the hand is that this is the part of our own bodies that we see almost every time we act. If we type or play an instrument, if we eat or pick something up, if we open or close something, lock or unlock it, if we drive a car or motorcycle or bicycle, our hands are constantly in front of us. And it's interesting to me that um, there's just mainly a single body part, although we sometimes see other parts of ourselves, our feet or our forearms, that is constantly being presented to our eyes. And I think we've been overlooking something very important about this appendage for a long time. Let me see if I can uh, share with you another way of understanding our hands. This has to do with how we count, and one of the reasons that this is important is that we have this phrase in English, that doesn't count. It actually means that it's meaningless or we don't count it. Um, in fact, how we count our hands has a huge impact on the way that we count and understand individuality, unity, distinction, and sets. And the way that we're taught to count, um, many of us are taught to count on our hands, and we are taught to count this as five. That's uh, the count for each of the individual appendages of the hand. I'm going to call that the human count. Now, if you look carefully at my hand, uh, you'll notice that there are sort of obvious lines of division on the inside of my hand. In this sense, the inside of the hand may be thought of as the sign of separation. If I turn the hand around, you'll see that although there are many uh, sort of rough lines all over the back of my hand, there are no obvious lines of distinction. This side of the hand may be thought of as the side of unity. Notice that you need both sides, distinction and unity, to have a hand at all. These sides are not in conflict, they both come together, there's no other way to have them. Now an animal uh, might be uh, understood to be a little bit more intelligent than a human in counting the hand. It would look first at the inside of the hand, and it would recognize a problem with the human counting method. The problem is, we do not count the most important thing. The animal would like us to count the most important thing first for a number of reasons. First, if we don't count the most important thing first, we may forget that it is important, or we may forget to count it at all, as has happened with most human cultures. Secondly, uh, counting the, the things in order of importance uh, keeps their importance present in our consciousness and awareness. The most important thing about your hand is not your fingers, it is the place where the members come together, the unifying body. We do not count this. We do not count the place the members come together, or the palm. The animal would count the palm first, so we count one for the palm, one for the thinking member or thumb, and one for each of the working members or fingers. The animal's count would be six. Now an angel uh, knows something that the animal does not, but it also remembers that you must count the most important thing first. For the angel, the most important thing is to count one for the unity of the hand first. First, your hand is one. Then the angel would turn it over to the side of distinctions and count one for the unifying body, one for the thinking member or thumb, and one for each of the working members. By the way, I refer to this as the thinking member because it's really the um, appendage of the hand that gives the hand, the human hand, its many of its most unique and powerful capacities. But the angel knows an even more important secret. So after counting one for the whole, one for the unifying body, one for the thinking member, and one for each of the working members, that is seven. And by the way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes in our head, not five, not six, seven. The angel would then add a plus to the count for the wrist. So the angel's count would be seven plus. Now the wrist is really amazing because it leads across a gap to an astonishing set of extensions to the hand. Let me explain. You, like your hand, have one unifying body. Like your hand, you have one thinking member 
and like your hand, it has two major sections, neck and head. Like your hand, you have one, two, three, four working members, and like your hand, they each have one, two, three major sections. Now in case the significance of this is lost on you, you are the hand of something. And like your hand, you have a wrist that leads upscale to a, a more astonishing implementation of the same paradigm. We'll get to that in a moment. If you were to see a hand sticking out of the ground and not know what it was, you would never imagine that across the wrist lie senses so astonishing as eyes, the ability to smell, the possibility of taste, kissing, and speech, and the possibility of hearing. Across this plus that comes after the angel's count of seven lie impossible extensions of sensing. Now the hand itself has astonishing capacities of feeling and manipulation, but across the wrist lie a whole other set of domains of senses, and you are like your hand in this way. You have a second wrist, and it is not physical, because if it were, it would have more mass than the entire universe. Your second wrist does not, it is like the wrist of your hand in that, as you'll notice by looking at mine, the wrist does not connect to the thinking member. It connects to the unifying body. Let me explain further. In your gut, you have an older brain. This brain contains its own kinds of neurons. It also contains hyperstructures of anciently evolved symbiotic bacteria that can form relational sensing networks on the fly. Some of them may contain the capacity to sense magnetic um, fields, disturbances to those fields, and information within those fields. There is, um, between your gut and your brain, a trunk of nerves, but 80% of the traffic on that trunk goes from gut to brain, not from brain to gut. Your second wrist connects you to a set of senses that are unlike anything ever hinted at in human literature, fiction, or imagination. Across your second wrist lie forms of connectivity and sensing that are similarly that similarly exceed the senses that we are familiar with in the same way they exceed the senses of our own hand. I hope that after listening to this, you may understand that it is important to count the unity, to count the unifying body, to realize that we count the same way, the count of a human is seven, and that you have a second wrist that you may be able to discover, activate, and explore across. In case you think that this is only something that's instanced in the human, um, I could uh, sketch for you uh, many other features of the same kind of relationship in almost every natural form. Uh, for example, one of the most astonishing and useful forms to look at is a tree. A leaf is a bit like a flattened version of a tree. It has kind of a central trunk, it often has veins. Um, these are usually filled in with material because uh, it's used as a, as a receptor for sunlight. But then, of course, it has a wrist, right, which we call the stem. And that wrist leads uh, to a, a working member, right, which we call a branch. And that branch leads to a unifying body. Now, fascinatingly, half of the tree uh, reaches upward and branches upward into the atmosphere, um, into, towards space to receive sunlight and um, carbon dioxide and other chemistries. Uh, whereas the other half of the tree branches downward. And instead of having leaves, it has hairs and um, infinitely complex little bacteriological networks that surround the root system. This is somewhat like our relationship with waking and sleeping. During our waking uh, parts of our lives, we are in the atmosphere, we see the sky, the stars, um, or excuse me, the sun, and uh, we receive light and um, we see what is actually apparent all around us in the world. During our sleeping uh, experience, we inhabit darkness and we dream. And we are down in sort of the dark roots of mind and experience. And so in this way, uh, there's an analogy between the upper part of the tree and the lower part of the tree and our waking experience and our sleeping experience. There's a lot more that I could share with you about this, but I'm going to leave a lot of that to your own discovery. This does not come from a book. You will not find this written anywhere. Um, this comes from direct experience of learning with a non-human intelligence who wanted to show me something that was actually much more profound than this that I was able to encode by translating it into an examination of the most important uh, appendages and forms and relationships that... Um, 
that the understandings that I was shown reveal to me. I hope that you may enjoy it, and I would like to encourage you to teach others to count the hand differently, particularly children, because if we learn to count the unifying body and to count one for the whole and to understand that there's a connection between those and an upscale representation, it will change the basic nature of our intelligence. Additionally, I just want to point out that like the leaf, the hand is sort of a flattened and utilitarian version of the same paradigm of which our body is an instance. Similarly, across the wrist, there is an even more expanded similar paradigm that, is, that makes our body seem very flat. I hope that you will enjoy this uh, idea and expand upon it and share it and explore it with those that you love. Bye.